Rochester team will host the Don Darrow Ball Club out of Royal Oak. And uh, the Royal Oak team having some problems. They are 0-2 in the league. Two losses to West Bloomfield. And or one, one loss to West Bloomfield, one to Losser. And uh, not very much to cheer about on the Don Darrow side. Only two starters back from last year. And they're both on defense. Well, Don Darrow's going through a learning and it's a learning experience right now. They had two players back. They lack a little experience on the offensive, uh, offensive defensive line. And uh, right now is a gut wrench time to find out what kind of player they are. They should get a little motivated today because they have parents night going against them. If that doesn't motivate you, they think a week system was a four to bring in there. It ain't nothing will. That's right. Uh, Don Darrow, again, lacking that uh, offensive and defensive line uh, experience. That's why they're going to go to something different this night. They're going to go to uh, some power out of the backfield against this Rochester team. With the pause now, before the kickoff, we'll be back right after this. Enjoy the very best in final. Uh, Rochester now. They are 2-1 and one overall with a win over Hazel Park at 21-15. Uh, a win over Birmingham Groves, 14-7. Some very tough ball games. And their loss was even tougher, 9-7 against Avondale. They, they had a real, real legitimate shot at winning the conference title right now with their 1-0. And, oh. and they got a big night tonight. The parents are out there. Everyone's parents out there tonight to watch them play probably one of the big games in front of the whole family. Something to look for from that Rochester offense. There it is right there. The quarterback, Chris Costas, uh, Tony Camera, the running back, Craig Balder, the other running back, Ted Fisher, Dennis Ingemels, Alex Nagy, Jamie Rubble, Jeff Wood, Chris Jacobs, Mike Corrigan, and Steve Bestwick rounded out at the wide receivers. Rochester running in eye and a pro offensively. The Rochester defense looks this way. Joe Johnston, Bill Barker, Jim Myers, Peterson, Ingemels, Aoti, Nagy, Vestal, Childers, Jenkins, and Beswick. That is the Rochester lineup for tonight. There is the Don Darrow Ball Club, Dean Parks, Lynn Livingston, Brian Hallis, Sam Lynch, Jerry Wenzel, Brian Boswell, Mark Wolf, Ted Raymond, Dan Simon, Ed Myers, and Bruce Dorsett. That's the way they're going to line up offensively, defensively for Don Darrow. Wenzel, Wolf, Raymond, Henningsen, Simon, Lovejoy, Phillips, Dorsett, Parks, Livingston, and German. A lot of names you see going both ways for Don Darrow that you didn't see on the Rochester lineup. That's going to be an important factor tonight, even though it's a cool evening, a perfect night for football. But if they can wear them down a little bit, especially with them not winning a game, they might break them a little early today. It's a, I think it's an important game for Royal Oak Dundero Ball Club. Even though they have a young JV team that's 4-0, and zero, they have got a chance to get some experience under the belt this year. It's going to be a learning situation, but it will be a good chance they can win tonight and get them back on the road to uh, the dominance they were in the past. Okay, uh, Gene Bell, our... Uh, no commentator tonight good to have you back gene and uh, have you been on any ball clubs like that that have went through a rebuilding type uh, phase yeah, i was in high school my team uh, when i was in ninth grade my high school team where uh, they went one in nine and they got beat by a team that scored 56 points on the first half of the season and uh next year we came when we were four and six and it's a learning situation by the time we were seniors we knew what it took to win and we won't end up number four in the state of ohio so I understand what Royal Oak's going through. Right now, they get to suck that belt up and come on and, and play football. Like I said, their JV is 4-0, so that gives them a little hope for the future. And uh, another bad spot for uh, Don Darrow is their uh, quarterback, uh, which is a junior, Ernie B Batane, who is out uh, at a nail uh, in his foot. And it wasn't totally taken out. Hopefully, they, they were going to get him back in. And... Uh, they had, he had to go back into surgery, so he's still out. And uh, he's just got a fine arm. But the problem is no blocking. They just can't get any blocking. That's why the difference in the offense tonight for Frank Muir, the uh, coach for Don Darrow. I don't know who started the wing T wing situation, but I, I know Notre Dame ran it real well with the full horsemen and stuff like that. And right now they're going back to the power of football and things that, that really do well for them. And uh, with the experience off of the line, we'll be back in a few minutes after this message. Well, we hope some 
Dave Zorin along with Gene Bell back here at Rochester High School where the Falcons will be hosting Royal Oak Don Darrow. And we mentioned the problems of Don Darrow, but things have been looking pretty good for Mike Van Dam's team, the Rochester Falcons, as they are two and one. Uh, in the coming weeks, they'll be playing Losser, Athens, and Lathrop, so they've got some tough teams coming up. They'd like to get over this game right here and get them down to some business. Yeah, they, they, my, my alma mater in Ann Arbor right now, they're going through the same thing. Uh, this is an easy game for them, and it's, uh, it's the kind of game that you really have to really prepare yourself well for, especially with three tough games coming up, and you got to stay mentally sharp. That's what football is all about in the peaks and valleys. As you can see, uh, the great example is the Lions. After beating Dallas and losing to Indianapolis, uh, the Dallas victory uh, seems like nothing, really, because that part of the lineup or in their uh, uh, roster would have been that way anyway you uh, got, had they predicted it. You got to win the ones you're supposed to win and to see if you're going to be a good ball club. And the kickoff goes to Don Darrow, a uh, bouncing ball and picked up there by number 85 for Don Darrow, and whistles are loud down there. And quick, number 85 for Don Darrow, that is Jeff Smith running it back. And Brian Hallis, excuse me, number 86, bringing it back. They got a good, get a good field position on this, on this play right here. The, they got a short kickoff, and it got lucky because he went through his arms and bounced up, and he ran back in his hands, and he made a nice little run off of it. Right there, he tipped there. Nice cut right there, got his shoulder pads down, and tiptoed through the tulips here, and got as much as he could get. Illegal procedure, dance the white, decline, kick it again. We're going to see another kickoff now. So Hallis, his little run back, will go for not now, and uh, we're going to see another one. I think that's, that's a rare thing that happens. An uh, offensive lineman just goes after the kicker real quick and uh, got across the line before the ball was kicked. A little anxious. Maybe that's a good sign from Royal Oak. They got it some, got a little uh, adrenaline flowing tonight. It might be a real good ball game. The thing that uh, Frank Fuhrer was uh, disappointed this year is the lack of intensity on the team and oh, maybe this this can do it for him kickoff handled way back there by number 27 that is mark wolf wolf bringing it up the middle and finally swarmed on by the falcons down there as those whistles are definitely loud down there well get a second kickoff and they gained, they gained the yard so everything worked out for the best not a bad run back for mark wolf as roy Lowe will start there, about the 31 yard line, Don Darrow that is. Quarterbacking the team, number 19, Jerry Wenzel. Also plays safety defensively. He's got two in the backfield and two tight ends, wing neck, and spinning for a couple of yards is Mark Wolf. What they're doing right now, it's a good defensive charge, an offensive charge. They're gonna fill it out, I, I don't know if, um, if uh, Rochester was prepared for the wing situation right here, because this is a very uh, unusual kind of offense for it to be played and, and to play in high school football today or, or any other level of football. And get prepared for it, may catch him off guard and get the ball down the field a few times. Don Darrow needs some kind of a spark in this offense, and Frank Fuhrer said he hopes this can do it tonight. A little change that he's made, just power running. And Wolf with a big run, getting close to a first down. That was nice, quick feet, good. He's slashing, running right there. Yeah. He set the men up with a head and shoulder fake and cut inside of him and gained good eight yards. Impressive run. He's going to be about a yard short. It'll be third and one. And uh, Frank Fuhrer, starting out early here, has something to cheer about with uh, some good running. Let's take a look. A power off tackle with two backs running back. Good block by the fullback right there on the linebacker. He cuts inside right there. Good hard running and close to a first down. Mark Wolf. Carrying the ball for some good yardage. Let's see who's got it now. It should be a uh, uh, Royal Oaks ball. He did, the, he did a young player's mistake. He watched too much NFL games, and he, he tried to lean the ball out there to get the extra yards, and somebody knocked it away from him. First down now for Don Darrow. As they have been able to do what they haven't done in previous games, and that is pick up some first downs. Here in the early going, they're setting the pace. 
Two men in the backfield, handoff to 44, the fullback, big gain, a big gain of about six yards on the play. That was good running by Bill Sage. You got to hit the first time at the line of scrimmage, kept the feet going, extra effort. I, I'm really imp I'm really impressed with Royal Oak Dundero so far because that was a criticism of the coach earlier that they had any intensity. And so far tonight, they come up the ball real crisp. You can see right here with the handoff, hit at the line of scrimmage, he skips a little bit right there, and bam, another six yards. Well, he said he was... Uh, failing to get any blocking from the offensive line, so he's going to have a back lead through. This time they go the other way on a counter, and he is hit hard by number 86 right there. Tim Jenkins, or was it 88? Steve Beswick. I think it was Steve Beswick. Made a nice good little pop when he rolled the hips on him and stopped him short of the first down and gets third down and two yards to go. Let's take a look down there. There's Sage with the carry again and just stood right up there. Uh, number 88, Steve Beswick. It'll be third and a long two. The handoff this time going to number 23. First down and more as he refuses to go down. And that is Brian Boswell. That was good hard running again. 165 senior. It, it, this, 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 the game plan is working out real well right now. They're executing well. The back's leading up there. to pick up the extra linebackers. They're filling the holes and kick it out. And good hard running. You know, they've been hit the line of scrimmage. But the keyboard, you can see right here, off power off tackle. He cuts inside, good running. He spins right here, hands down. Got the extra two or three yards that the offense team needs. Back to action now. A confusion in the backfield and trying to at least get to the line of scrimmage is Bill Sage. He ran into a little mix up right there. The new offense they're putting in this week. You're going to expect some mistakes in the first series, a couple series, until you get things worked out. Uh, now they have to throw the ball now. They're in a passing situation. Now we'll see what's going to happen. I wonder if uh, the Falcons were ready for this type of offense against Dondero. And Dondero is moving the ball well. First time they've ever been in a second and long situation as they have continued to gain yardage on a first and second downs. Second and 10. Man in motion, number 45. Whistle on the play. And it's Off against Dondero. Off of the guard move before the snap. And he had a man in motion. Now, now they're in a lot of trouble now. procedure against the offense. Second down. Second and long coming up now. Don't uh, look for a pass coming up, but uh, they're just going to try to gain some yardage back. Uh, if they do pass, it may just be a quickie, and that's what uh, they've been going with. Some sort of a slant in. This time he's got a lot of time to pass, and it's complete to number 86. Brian Hallis, a big game. Are they surprised, uh, Dave? Surprised uh, me, because I was talking to uh, Frank Muir before the game. He said, we're not going to run. We're not going to pass much. If we do, it's just going to be something real quick. But we, that time, all he had all day to pass. You know, we've been really critical of the offensive line. At the beginning of the game, right there, he had plenty of time to throw the ball down the field. And uh, as you're going to see right here, he fakes in here, counter, out, counter play. Uh, two men come on, on this uh, outside linebacker block. He steps up in the pocket, fires it down there. Good catch. Nice First grab. down. Alice brings it down. And what made that play was the fake because they've been running the ball so much. And there's the handoff to number 23, Boswell, again. Nothing on the gain. And I think Rochester has adjusted to that uh, running style that Don Darrow has set early in this game. They brought eight men up on a, up on a line of scrimmage. We have basically eight men back and uh, two corners on the side and just daring them to throw the ball in the air. Um, you can see the kind of adjustment they're going to make on first down. So not a bad pass by Wenzel on that earlier play. Had a nice uh, touch to it. Second and 11. He's being pressured and uh, lucky to get it off, really. <laughs> he went down hard. <laughs> the referee got part of the game. Now he feels good. He got knocked down on that play right there. Um, that was the problem right there. He had a little, we had a lot of pressure that time, and he get a chance to set his feet and throw the ball downfield. He did have a man open on the flag pattern that time. Third and eleven now, another passing situation, and the man to watch is Hallis, Brian Hallis, number eighty-six. They're going to step these out of these situations in the game. They have to be around third and short, third and two. Uh, fakes the pass, drops back. He has a man in the flat. Number 44 steps out of bounds. And they gain half of it back. 
that was good design on that play. Uh, he, we did it, had the tight end and a wide receiver go downfield and the back swing on the backfield and no one's there to cover him in the flat. If he could stay in bounds, I'm pretty sure he gained the first down. Yeah, there was no one out there. Let's take a look at Sage as the receiver, number 44, but he's pressured in the pocket now, has to step out. And Sage just steps out of bounds right there. We did, he's pumped a little couple of times downfield. Oh, fourth down. Fourth down, they're going for it. Why not? And hit in the backfield is Sage. And he is covered there by number 24, Bill Barker. A 5'10", 175 defensive end doing his duty down there. That was a great play, just like Lawrence Taylor right there. He smelled the play, and uh, he had a man-to-man -man coverage, and he stayed with his man and shook off the block and made a great play for his, uh, his offense, for his defensive team. Let's take a look. That pressure coming in quickly now, and stepping out. This is the pass to Sage earlier that uh, had he stayed in bounds, he would have certainly had the first down. But instead now, it's a first down the other way. First time Rochester's had their hands on the ball and going off tackle and jumping off tackle, really, Dan Simon. Yeah, we're gonna see two games, two teams are gonna ground the ball, grind the ball out and we'll see who's the most physical team right now. What kind of football is gonna intimidate kind of football. Because once you start beating the person down, then your, your gates are wide open. 5.57 in the first quarter. Second and seven for Rochester. One man in the backfield. He's got a pro formation. And the man in motion is number 80, Brad Irwin. To pass. And complete to Irwin and hit hard right down there. So a complete pass. Bastion's pass is complete. That was a good play. Uh, what Royal Oak is doing on defense, they played a little zone there, which surprised me. It surprised me. The, the, the cornerback came up and let the man go outside him. I thought the wide receiver was wide open. He threw the ball in there with touch and got five, six yards. Good touch. And hit right there. Good tackle there by number 45. Back to live action and rambling for a first down is number 45, Dan Simon. That was a good run right there. He's hit the line of scrimmage and shook him off. And uh, left a few bodies on the way back there. They're going to put a, a, wrap this man up with both arms. You just can't arm tackle him. Get the body in front of him. Excuse me, that was Craig Balter. Tough to read off these uh, small rosters. Not used to them, Gene. Excuse me. Balter, the ball carry, number 45. The quarterback is Costas. Number 15, handoff that time, and gain of about three yards. It'll be second and seven. Yeah, but Rochester team right now is doing a, did a, a very, they're very, very complex offensive team. Even though they run the, run, run the ball a lot, and they right there just ran a sucker play for the inside nose guard and let him go all the way through and just ran behind it without anybody ever blocking him. High formation in the backfield, pro, and looking for a quick slant in, and that's where the linebackers have to be ready, and right there was number 51. And 51 is a change in their lineup, Ryman. Ryman, formerly number 28, a running back for Don Darrow, and he is number 51. Let's take a look. You see, he fakes the ball in the middle of the old belly pass, he had a slant right there, and great play by Ryman. Just couldn't hold on to the ball. Costa sends his man in motion. The handoff going to the man in motion, number 80. And that is Nate Childers. They ran a little wing counter reverse to the man in motion. Uh, faked in the middle. The man coming the outside to make a lot of confusion for the linebackers. They don't know when to feel and who the man, what man to hit. Childers not enough for a first down, and Rochester will have to punt. And a low line drive taken there by number 27, Mark Wolf. A gutsy play, too, as he caught it falling down. And now they get a chance to op the offensive team gets, gets the opportunity to start on the 25 with no damage. Not need to move the ball down the field like they did last time and not make the mistake and get in the long third down situation. Coach uh, Mike Van Dam of the Rochester Falcons said that he expects a, a very low-scoring game, and he'll be very surprised if it is a high-scoring game. 
335 left in the first quarter. Handoff going off to Wolf. Wolf getting some big yardage off tackle. I mean, I'm really impressed. So, you know, I, I I really expected to roll over, to roll over and play dead today. And uh, they're coming off the ball. The running backs are running real well. They get the continuity of the offensive line blocking as well as the offensive backs run. They're going to be a great team in the future. Second and a long four, we'll call it. And a big gain again. This time breaking outside, but stopped by number 53. That is Dennis Ingemels. Bill Harris, number 29 on the carry for Don Darrow. Big game for a first down. And Don Darrow eating up the ground yardage here, Gene. What you're gonna see, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see this little running back make a terrific block on the linebacker. He's gonna fake up it, and the linebacker never sees it. And he gets a gaping hole you're gonna watch right here. Great run, good fake right there. Good block by number 87. Sam Lynch. 28, Jim Myers just ran right past the play and uh, cutting back. A uh, big cutback there and a big gain that time for Bill Harris. Will Lucas ran the ball right off, off tackle for five good yards. They come off the ball real well. They run the ball right at the middle, run right at him. It should give a lot of confidence to the young team. 220 left in the first quarter. It's been mostly two drives so far. This is the third drive of the game and a big game that time by number 29 Bill Harris first down so Frank Fuhrer has to be very happy about this if I was Rochester right now I'd be a little worried because um you give him giving Royal Oaks a chance to get some momentum and get a little confidence in themselves uh, when you had him down look you see Paul right off the off the hole a hole a gigantic hole I can still run through those kind of holes um and good running good good four lane for the first down Two men in the backfield, handoff to 23, trying to cut back, but he cut right back into the uh, pursuit, taking that Brian Boswell on the carry. I just I just think they're a little confused on, on the offensive scheme. Uh, I don't think they've ever seen something like, the, like this before. Maybe the coaches aren't used to seeing it either with the wing back, uh, the wing back offense, and uh, this will make a few adjustments. Maybe they can stop it right now. Roll up doing a terrific job coming off the ball. They have been eating up the clock and eating up the yardage. A stumble in the backfield, and that broke up everything. On the carry, Wolf, uh, Jerry Wenzel just fell down. Managed to get the handoff off, though. And we've got a third down and about four, four and a half. Are they going to put the ball in the air this time? You say you doubt it very much? I think it'll be another counter position, counter play right here. They're going to fake in the middle. And come off tackle with one of the one of the plays. They uh, they've been running the ball very well. Let's see what they do here. Mix it up, maybe it's pass. No, they do the counter, Gene, and they gain big yardage. Not enough for a first down, though. Brian Boswell's running real well. He got hit the line of scrimmage. He spin and try to get the second get the second effort for the first down, and he just come up a little bit short. Guy Where's on the play, Gene. Uh, See what happens here. I think it was too many men in the backfield, and uh, it's against Don Darrow. Let's see the play here. A counter, counter inside, counter. He cuts inside. He hit the line scrimmage. He spins. Got a shoulder pass down. Legs driving. A lot of men come hit him, so he could not get it. 45 seconds left in the first quarter. No score yet. And the penalty now being Illegal marked Illegal position. Up. Offense. Not having seven men on the line of scrimmage. Third down. There it is. And it's going to be third and very long now. Third and about nine. Now what the young player should do on the wide receiver right there, all you can do, all you have to do is ask the line judge where the mark is. You know, he'll put a foot, foot down, and you get right there where the line, the line of scrimmage is, and you'll never be in the backfield. Third and nine coming up. Wentzel, the quarterback, back to pass. He's got his man out in the flat. That's Wolf, but he has strung out there by number 28, Jim Myers. And again, it's going to gain a half a yard right there. He was under a lot of pressure again, and he had to get rid of the ball awful quick. Awful quick, and uh, he just got a chance. They're now fourth down and eight, and I guess they're going to punt the ball now. Let's take a look at the pass now. Wenzel drops back. They're going to throw out in the flat that's where they've been successful but uh, 
Wolf had to come back for the pass just a little bit and could not cut a field. And that will end the first quarter. And with the score nodded at 0-0, zero, zero, we'll be back for a second quarter action after these messages. Enjoy the very best in fine arts programming on Bravo, a premium service from Tribune United. WTUO-TV, Channel 2. Back here at Rochester High School for second quarter action. No score yet, but uh, both teams have uh, come up with a couple drives, and they just seem to stall at about midfield. Dondero to punt, and that is number 86, Brian Hallis. Hallis gets it off, a very high punt, fair catch called oh, for. He dropped the ball. He dropped the ball, and let's see the signal down here. We got a penalty coming up, and it's against Dondero. Well, a big break that time for Rochester. Right a little home field advantage right there on that last play. Uh, I didn't see the offensive line move, but the better, referee's in a better position than I am, and I, they do a quality job week in and week out. So I don't want to... Let's take a look at what happens. Yeah, everybody's moving there before the ball is kicked. No? No. The ball was already in the air. Look, he, what happened, he muscled the ball right there. Little, got a little pressure. He felt the, felt the man coming on top of him. Coming. They got a chance to recover. I don't think we run this back one more time. Uh, I don't think the ball, the ball was already snapped when the line was moving. Illegal position. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Ah. Well, we're both wrong, and the ref is right. Just as is always the case, right? That's correct. <laughs> we're going to do it again now. A big break for Rochester. A low line drive kick this time, taken by number 40. That is Nick Varellen. Morellen is down at his 25-yard line. It'll be first and 10 now at the 25-yard line for Rochester, and let's see what they can do. Well, it's been their own worst enemy so far. When they get a chance to get in, the, get in position to, to put the ball some points on the board, they make a fatal mistake, and that's why you can see they're 0-3 football team right now. At the quarterbacking is... Uh, Chris Costas, and he hands off to number 45. That is Craig Balter, a senior, 5'10", 190 pounds. Big horse, the horse and a half right there for a high school football player, nice size kid. And he's been averaging 3.9 yards a carry and gets that, just about that on that one. So it'll be second and six coming up. Chris Costa is the quarterback handing off this time to Balter. Balter, big game, breaks it into the backfield. First down and more. Great run, great hold by the offensive line right time. Time to do another count on page right there. And a little trap and uh, got, him in the, got him in the open right there. And good running by Balter. He hits two or three men at the end. He hits them, they don't hit him. Let's take a look. Costas handing off. Balter with a trap up the middle. And he is gone. High formation now in the backfield. Second man through this time. Off tackle and gaining a few yards himself is Tony Camera. They're doing the thing they need to do. Now they're finding the soft spots of the defense and they're punishing uh, at the point of attack. And they're running real well right now. Tony Camera. 5'10", 175. He I, is a junior. I feel a touchdown coming on. I just feel a touchdown coming on. Well, it's Parents Night, and Rochester wants to do it now. Second and three. Second man through, camera, and he struggles, and he gets the first down. Bouncing off a couple of missed tackles that time. They're in a little isolation to the outside. With the, with, that means with the fullback coming out and kicking out on the defensive end, and uh, the running back cut up inside, but he had a nice run right there at the point of attack. Costas handing off, second man through, you saw, leading you saw the Walter. Saw, saw the block right there. He had a second effort right there and saw the, the sticks and reached out for him. High formation again, hand off this time to Balter, and he gains a few yards. That was, that was 
That was similar to the old Statue of Liberty play. He just stood there for a second, a jab step froze, it cut back in the middle, and great running. He got eight yards out of that. I haven't seen, I've never seen that in my years of football. I've been playing since I've been six years old. Them do a play like they just stand like that and go up the middle. The second and about four, gain of about six. High formation, second man through, that is camera. Camera outside, makes one cut, and I thought <laughs> Tony Cameron was gonna have a touchdown. One cut, and he was on his way. He stumbled a little bit after that cut, and it was a great run. He got up there, no one is at the, at the, at the point of attack. No defensive man was there, and he just got there. It was Craig Balter made a great block on the corner, and cut up inside, just couldn't keep his footing, and it had been a touchdown. Balter and Camera helping each other out with some big blocks. Let's take a look. Gets outside, right? he switches to the right arm out there. He cuts back right here and just steps inside and just steps up, tips up his own foot, and he's already been a touchdown. I think he saw that end zone, <laughs> and that made him move his feet a little quicker than uh, he wanted to. Let's take a look. 8.54 left in the second quarter. No score. And a penalty being marched off now against Dondero. Illegal substitution against the defense. Five yards. Second down. Some very unusual penalties uh, called against Dondero tonight. Yes, yeah, well, they are very unusual. It'll be first and five. Uh, an unusual situation. First and five. You don't see that very often. And Balter carrying for... A few yards, getting close to that first down. It'll be second and about two. Not bad, uh, the first and five, huh? A lot of coaches can be winning a 70 to 80 percent clip, but you got first and five every time. <laughs> It'll be second and a long yard. We'll call it two yards. Second and two. I formation of backfield. First man through. Balter. He'll get the first down. It's hard to play defense when, when every time it's going to be second and one or second and two, first down. So he'll be the next coach going to Maxman to get the prestigious Maxman job. So this uh, senior, uh, Greg Balter, coming off the ball very quick and his uh, partner in the backfield, Tony Cameron, not doing a bad job either. As they start to pick up some yardage now in the second quarter, Balter going to the outside, bounces off one and uh, down to about... Inside the five, down to about the three-yard line. That was a great runner. I, I don't care what anybody says. I love to see that kind of runner. It's like, like the old days when Larry Zonka was out there. And had exactly what they remind me of, Larry Zonka and Jim Kick. You got the bruiser inside and the quick-footed guy on the outside, and they're doing a great job on this drive. 8.01 left in the second quarter. Back to the action now. Split backfield, he's got a pro formation. Uh, man in motion now, number 81, Chris Jacobs. The handoff going to Balter. Balter just won't go down, and he's in for a touchdown. Did we see this in the, in the Super Bowl games past when they were undefeated, he just, he left two men. I knew as soon as he got the ball, there's no way they were gonna stop it. I knew, I just had a feeling in my heart that he would score that touchdown. He just hit him, took, took him off, and scored. That's kind of man I just see running the football. It is parents' night here, Gene, and uh, you sound like a proud father out there. I tell you, it uh, sounds like your boy got that one in, and he did. Number 45, Greg Balter, a senior 5'10", 190. In the first six points of the ball game up there. Six nothing lead now, Rochester. Now to put it through will be Steve Beswick. Beswick's kick is blocked, and it's blocked by number 62, Mark Phillips. With 7.56 left in the second quarter, the score six to nothing, Rochester leads. We'll be back. Enjoy America's number one satellite network, home box office, available from Tribune United. WTUO TV, Channel 2, serving Oakland County. High School, where we have just seen Rochester with a very impressive 75-yard march for a 6 to nothing lead. If we can uh, take a look at that touchdown here, Gene, call it. Uh, right off tackle with, it, with, with his partner running out forward. He had two men right here. I just knew right this point. Feet are dragging, or I mean pumping right there. He's just pushing them down. He just goes in the end zone like no one was ever there. 
And that's what the fullback loves, those kind of carries. Taken now by 86, Brian Hallis. Hallis with a big run back as the kickoff was very short. And the ball at about the 40-yard line. Let's see where they're going to mark it. You know, that previous play, I, I feel sorry for the defensive back because that's what I was. And uh, you see those big running power running backs come in there. You had no uh, chance to ever, you know, if a big running back and strong running back that, to stop him when he wants to get a touchdown. And the ball is at about the 37-yard uh, line, first and 10 there for Don Darrell. Pretty good field position. This is important for them. They're only six points behind. behind. A touchdown, extra point during the lead. And the way they've been running the ball, very impressive uh, movement on the left side of the line for Don Darrell. Looks like it's going to back him up a little bit. They, they're just out of sync just a little bit right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the quarterback is calling the signals, and everybody's just kind of looking around, and they we don't understand. I guess, or well, I get the feeling that they, we don't understand what's going on in the offense. So, uh, Coachman! That's the offense. So we're going to have a first and long coming up now. First and 15. Split backfield now for quarterback Wenzel. Wenzel back to pass on a first down situation. Got a man open, but right there on the coverage, number 28, and that is Jim Myers. That was a great play by Jim Myers. He covered a lot of ground. The ball was in the air. I thought the man was wide open. He came down and ripped the ball open. He may have hung it up there just a little too much, though, as Myers had some time to get over there. Yeah, but it was a great play. Let's Good athletic look. ability. He faced right there, he plumped the freeze of the defensive back, throws the ball. You can see right there, he locked a little bit. And he came a long way, and the ball was a little behind him anyhow. And he came a long way, but still a great play. Don't take throwing anything it, away from him. across the field, really, from one hash to the other. Went so a quick pitch this time to number 27, Wolf. He's not going anywhere. Tackled there by number nine, Joe Johnston. That was a great play by Joe Johnston. He had a man blocking on him. He reached down inside and still grabbed the leg and came down to tackle by himself. Joe Johnston in there on a blitz. He's a defensive back, got in there very quickly. Right, we're not, I guess we're all tough guys after all, huh? The <laughs> defensive back. 7-17. But tell me now, you guys used to love those blitzes, huh? I did. I like the person. I'm mean, going to worry about anybody getting behind me for a touchdown. <laughs> did anybody get behind you for a touchdown? I'm not going to talk about that now. <laughs> Wetzel back to pass. He's pressured, and he lets go. Straight center field taken by Brian Hallis, or excuse me, the other side, Tim Jenkins. That was like Chet Lemon out there, didn't it? The center field, got back underneath it, <laughs> intercepted for a good 10 yards, return. Jenkins, uh, the Defensive back back there, six foot senior, 185, hauls it down for a big interception for Rochester. That's got to take a lot of air out of uh, John Darrell right now as they were looking for a big drive of their own. Let's take a look as Wenzel back to pass. Sees his man cutting across the middle. Lost it up there too high. He had a man open. Right he just there. Not far enough. And the interception taken by Tim Jenkins. With Rochester back on offense right now, they just ran a play and got two yards right up the middle. Uh, this is an important play. I, I know I say it a lot. This is a very important series for Royal Oak Dundero because they, they, they have lost three games already. It's easy to get your chin down right now. It's now time to, to, to get find all your manhood you can find and come out and play football. High formation back to pass is Casas. Casas was a great pass. And this one's intercepted by the other 86, Brian Hallett. Hallis trying to look for some running room and gets a nice cut back. Let's throw the ball. Fumble. And who's got it this time? Ball goes out of bounds. First down. Still down Darrow ball. Great play. Great play. I thought he was beat there. He got his feet kind of tangled up. But he had a great athletic ability. Came out of it and made a great interception to put his team right back into the ball game. So a few exchanges. Uh, both number 86 has got that one. 86 nights. If you're playing a lottery, make sure you have 86 in there. Eight and six in there. <laughs> Let's take a look. Here's Costas back to pass. It was a very nice pass, too. Just let him too far. And guess who's back there? Number 86. That is Brian Hallis. Well, I don't want to be picky. The, the, the wide receiver should have came in after the ball. He was just running on the outside, hoping the ball would be lost enough. If he came inside, he might have been able to break that up for interception. Hallis now and stripping the Whoa. ball loose was number 45 getting in there. Greg Whoa. Walter. Whoa, good hit. So 
But Balter got in there and uh, stripped the ball loose. That's my man, Balter, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> he got your touchdown. He almost made a big play there. 5.53 left in the second quarter. First and 10 now for Dondero. Off tackle, Wolf. Wolf oh, cutting back wow. and doing some nice running of his own. Gail Sayers type of running. He's taking his way, keeping his feet high and stepping around people as they were diving in. Great run. Great offensive blocking this time, too, by Roller Dondero. And he kept those feet very high. He walked over a couple tacklers. And they just couldn't get to his feet. Second and four, gain of about six. Let's take a look at how his feet are moving now. Watch, Watch this. this. He steps right here, steps. Oh, up there, up. Side step. Oh, great runner. You can't teach that. Second great and desire. four. And this time, stopped cold by number 54, John Aoti. Wow. Now you can do it back there as a running back. He just, that time, his offensive line got overwhelmed. They blitzed the two inside linebackers. It came after him and got it for a loss. Ayotte, 5'10", 190, defensive tackle in there. He comes out, or rather he's in there. Nose guard next to him, number 60, that is Alex Nagy. So they're doing a fine job on that line, but oh. tripping on the play is Wenzel. And ball is dead right there. That was a good, oh, they would come back to that play because I, I have a feeling uh, that the wide receiver was open that time. Uh, the defensive back cut inside was the man doing the post and uh, the wide receiver to the outside was wide open. Fourth and 12 now for Don Darrow. They made a few mistakes, but they still look good. They don't look like an 0-3 team. That's what I say. I'm really impressed with them. More, more so than anything else right there. Oh, they're making the, the key mistakes. Like this one here. And let's see what's going to happen here. Rochester gets this, and you could just uh, bet they're going to get six out of this. Very sad uh, situation now for Don Darrow as Rochester picks it up at about the six, seven yard line. So Rochester, first down now at the uh, seven-yard line. It'll be first and goal. It's uh, Craig Balter time. It's like middle time. It's Craig Balter time. He'll get in the ball three times and he'll score. Man in motion, Jacobs, and there is Balter. Hit once in the backfield. This time hit by three men, and uh, he's down. That was, a, that was a great time. Oh, over his head. He has no chance right there. At least try to get him in the hands, right in the numbers. Over his head, he has no chance. Now he tries to be the best he can do. Get out of the way. Kick the ball right now as much as possible. And Hallis has not much uh, room to do anything back there. Great pursuit. Just swarmed on. Great pursuit by Rochester. Second and seven, goal to goal. Ooh. And the ball taken by Cameron. He's in for a touchdown. <laughs> Oh, they get Jim kicked the ball this time, huh? Great offensive slide serve. And he left the man laying on the, on the field. I hope he's not hurt too bad. Tony Cameron got in. The man down is number 47, Bruce Deal. And uh, not a very good sight down there. Bruce Deal, a defensive back for Dondero. But uh, scoring on the play, number 36, Tony Cameron. Let's take a look. Good blocking. Good. He stopped right there and set up his blocking. Because if he would have earlier, if he'd have uh, rushed the play, he'd have been tackled for a loss. He just waited for his blocking and nice hole there. And he ran hard to the goal line. He deserved that. Momentum carried him in. The score now 12 to nothing. 3-10 left in the second quarter. I wonder what's going to happen next to tomorrow. I'm, I'm really excited about my alma mater going up uh, against Maryland. Um, we're number nine, but nobody predicted we would be ever, ever be in the, in the, in the season this year, and uh, I'm really excited. Well, now, uh, what happens when you guys over at U of M get ranked up there in the polls, though? Excuse me? Excuse me? You know what, what happens? There is the coach for uh, the uh, Falcons, Mike Van Dam, likes what he sees, a 12 to nothing score. And we'll be back with more second quarter action after this.
Dave Zorn along with Gene Bell. And Gene, I just want to ask you, what happens when U of M gets ranked up there in the rankings? So, is we that always, a bad omen? No, I, I think it's a great omen. We just happen to go out there and spend a little bit too much time out in California. And that's what happens <laughs> to us when we get out there. We're not used to that California living. Well, I hope, I hope this year you guys do it over there because uh, we need something like that after uh, the Tigers letting us down after World Series. Down on the field there is Bruce Deal, the defensive back for Royal Oak Down Darrow. Still down on the field, he is hurt. I don't like to see that kind of thing. I've been there before, and it's a very, very scary situation. And I hope the hope the young man very, uh, very much uh, speedy recovery. If anything serious is wrong, I hope nothing serious is wrong. Yeah. I remember it being hit down on the field. They say you get your bell rung, and it seriously, it sounds like a bell. When I got hit in the helmet, it. Uh, Sounds like a bell. Coach came running out the next thing I knew and held up some fingers. Fortunately, I took a guess and I was right. And he <laughs> got, let me back in the game. Fortunately, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I took a guess at how many fingers he held up. Um, I, I don't, I, I'm trying to try to sit here and analyze what Royal Oak needs to do to get back in the game and, and what is uh, Rochester's been big success so far. And uh, right now, uh, it's just the little things. Uh, a punt, they, they were, they were off, you know, offside, the legal procedure. Well, they had the ball down inside the 10-yard line. Uh, and then right here, they, oh, good. He's up off the, off the field. He's walking up on his own power. Oh, great. Bruce Deal, 5'6", 132. He's a senior. And he is up on his feet. And that's a good sign already. And like I was saying, in Rochester right now, uh, they're not doing anything different than Royal Oak. They're both moving the ball well, but they're not making the little mistakes that Royal Oak, are, Royal Oak is, and that's why they're in the contention for the championship title. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, Don Darrow really doesn't look like an 0-3 team, but uh, you know, the way they've been running the ball, but it's those little mistakes and unusual penalties that uh, most teams usually don't get, and they've come up with them. I don't think I've play, I played since I uh, get myself six, uh, six years old, and that's why I was 25. They're going for the two-pointer now. Rochester is. I formation in the backfield. Guess who's going to carry it? No, they're going to pass it. And he did catch it. It looked like it was tipped by number 67 alignment, Jim Vestal, or excuse me, Dean Parks over on the other side. But getting the reception, number 81, Chris Jacobs on a little slant in. That was a good, that was a good play by Rochester. He did get back on an even, even side by scoring seven points apiece for 14. Great catch and throw. He is hit while he's throwing. That's why it was low. Tipped there. It was tipped by 67, but tipped right in the hands of Jacobs. Good concentration by Jacobs. That's like, it's little things. Even let the ball go. If he doesn't touch the ball, they don't score the two points. Uh, if they don't overthrow the ball over the center, over the center, I mean, over the kicker's head, they don't get down in their position to score. And Royal Oak had to keep their head up and chin up because they're playing good football and just making the, the minor things and they'll straighten out the second half and we will have a good football game. 14-0, Rochester over Don Darrow. Low bouncing kick taken there by 45. And down at about the 42-yard line on the carry, Dan Simon. 5'6", 165, senior, getting up slowly. And he goes back to the lineup. 3.05 left in the first, or rather the first half of football here. 14-0, Rochester leads. And they have something to cheer about right now. A shotgun now shown oh. by Royal Oak, trying to give them some passing time, and their timing is still off, you can tell. Oh, a great try for an interception there. Number nine, Joe Johnston, a senior 5'10", 175 defensive back. Royal Oak was awful lucky they didn't get the ball intercepted. He was well covered that time. There's no reason to throw the ball out there that time. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to see they went to the shotgun. Give the give give kid some time to get the ball down the field and get back into the game in the first half. Wenzel with a little time to throw on a down and out pattern, but break it, broken up there by Johnston. Shotgun again. Number 19, Wenzel on the run now, but he is being picked up by the defense of Rochester, gain of about four yards. It'll be second and about six coming up and a flag on the play. That's a sign of a young team. They're inexperienced, they're out there holding uh, legal procedure a couple of times, and 
Right here, shotgun. Cuts up inside. Good block. By number 29, Bill Harris. He cuts up inside. Trying to get the best he can get out that play. Let's hear the call. Illegal procedure. Illegal position. Not enough men on line scrimmage. Offense. That's the third time this evening. You know, when it caught him critical time, but he had a drop punt, didn't have enough men on the, on the field. And again, they put themselves deep in the hole here. Second and 15. Wenzel to throw. Got some time. He throws it in heavy traffic and almost hit and uh, hit there by Johnson, almost intercepted by number 28 down there, Jim Myers on the tip. See, right now, they, the Royal Oak knows they're going to I mean, uh, Roy, Rochester knows they're going to throw the ball, and they're going to back, be back and covering all the wide receivers with two or three people at the back, because they're only sending off three. And um, it's going to be very difficult for them to move the ball down the field right now. They might need to get a quick, quick draw or a screen pass right here to get the ball down field. It's third down, about 15. It is third and 15, 225 left on the clock here in the first half. Wenzel to throw, he's throwing deep. Ball hung up there and picked off by number 80, Nate Childers. He's gone. Oh. Childers hit down and hit in the air by number 11, Paul Cantrell. There's a flag on the play. It was thrown just as Childers was tackled. I think, it was a, I think it would be a clip. It's against Rochester. A big one. Two, the two wide receivers ran into each other. No one got a chance to run to the ball. Let's hear the call here. First of all, clipping 60. Well, it's a first down now. First and 10 for uh, Don Darrell. No? The other way, that's right. Two oh four left in the first half. Two minutes to go. Big hole on a draw. And a big gain for Balter. Doing a fine job running tonight. It's kind of surprise uh Rudolph right there. Everybody in the stadium thought they were gonna throw, including myself, and they ran a draw play up the middle for a good six, seven yards with my man Balter. Second and four now coming up. I formation in the backfield. To pass now. Costas will run it for a first down and go out of bounds to stop the clock. Smart play right there. He got, he got the first down and they have minute and 25 seconds left in the first half. They got a position to get, get a chance to score some more points. 125 left on the clock here in the first half. And another flag on the play against Rochester. Another hold, another big, big another big penalty uh, for Rochester. Now they're trying to play the same game the Royal Oaks playing. You know, they have the opportunity to put some more points and put the game out, all pretty much out of reach with the kind of passing uh, offense they have so far. 14 nothing to score, 125 left. And let's hear the call. Illegal use of the hands against the offense. Second down. Second and long now. Second and 15 for Rochester. And another passing down for them. Yeah. They, they change the rules so much, and I guess the kids are a little confused with, uh, with the legal use of hands. Because you can't use your hands within three yards of the line of scrimmage. The handoff going to the second man through. Big gain. He's going to be very close to a first down. And camera again. The junior, 5'10", 175, a great backfield back there for Rochester, doing the load of the work tonight for this team. Yeah, you, you, me and you both can run like that, though, if they have the big holes like he's getting right now. Offensive line are doing a terrific job right here. He cuts back inside, and look, look at that hole. No one's around to even touch it. He's over the stride up right there. And he's got three or four men to bring him down, down as you get 15, feet, 15 yards down the field. Big gain again that time for Cameron, and the first down, and more. He might have almost close to 100 yards in this first half. A timeout called for Rochester with 52 seconds left. 14 to nothing the score. And we will be back to see how Rochester can do in the closing seconds.
Enjoy America's number one satellite network. Home box office. Available from Tribune United. WTUO TV, Channel 2, serving Oakland County. There's your score 14 0. Rochester leads. And Don Darrow has made a few mistakes to give him that lead. 52 seconds left here in the first half. First and 10 now on the 35 yard line of Don Darrow. Rochester's ball. And they've had a lot to cheer about so far, and they want to get a few more points on the board before they go to halftime. Yeah, let, let mom and dad be real happy and make sure the son's seen it. Every son played tonight, or uh, since it is parents' night. And uh, they're doing a good job of keeping keep away from mistakes except for those last drives, and they're moving the ball up the, up the field with a running play, which they do well. And Don Darrow will have something to say about letting everyone play tonight because uh, Hey, uh, they want to get back into this game. Let's see how bad they want to, though, because uh, it's their mistakes that have, that have uh, opened up the door a few times for Rochester. Costa's a quarterback, 5'10", 170. He's a senior. He's back to pass. He's got a nice one out there. Hung it up there for number 80, and he is down. Very close to a first time. Nate Childers down there. And he is hit by number 29, Bill Harris. That was a great catch. Uh, more people think, because he knew he was going to be about to get hit. And the ball hung in the air like that. And he took the, took the man way out of it and caught the ball and uh, got a nice hit, too. Gave five, away. six yards. And he knew where he was at. He wanted to get the first. He did, and he got out of bounds. So it stopped the clock. 44 seconds left. Oh, look at that rain come off that ball. <laughs> he hung it up there, but he <laughs> hung in there right there. Nate Childers. Back to live action now. The handoff going to camera. They want to stay out of the ground, but they're going to have to call another timeout now. 37 seconds left. Timeout called now for Rochester. It'll be second and a long three. We'll call it four. Another Falcon timeout. What, what I like about... Well, and uh, with the timeout called by Rochester, we'll be back with more action right after this. nothing Rochester leads 37 seconds left on the clock now they're being very smart with it it's uh, second and about four and they've had some pretty good uh, situations coaches love these second and four calls I'll tell you well I mean Rochester's showing a lot of experience here they their, their wide receivers are getting out of the ball out of bounds when it's when it gets close to the line of scrimmage uh, coach Mike Van Dam right there had a chance and uh, he's a teacher you can see right here he's a well-disciplined coach his players are doing the things that are necessary when they run the ball up the field, they're calling a timeout. They know what kind of, how many timeouts they have left on the, on, the, on, the, on the clock. And I think it's a well-conceived well two-minute drive. 37 seconds of those two minutes are left now. Single man in the backfield. That is Balter. Back to pass is Costas. Costas on the run. Passes. Intercepted. Intercepted by number 46 and a big one, Steve Lovejoy. Good, good play for Royal Oak uh, Dundero. Uh, he didn't get a chance to get any muscle on the ball. His man he was trying to hit was behind him. I guess he didn't see the man standing right there. Uh, good play by Royal Oak. Now we have a ball game now. Without them scoring a point, going into the second half. This has got to be a fired up Royal Oak Dondero team. Now let's take a look. Costas rolling out. A little pressure right here. He throws off his back foot. And you get a chance, you can see, the, you might not, you don't get a see chance seeing the screen, but the man behind him was open. You get a chance to get up enough ball on it. Now just trying to run the clock out, the closing seconds here. Bill Sage carrying the ball for... Sage Don carrying Don number 44 for Dondero. Clock winding down now. Timeout called by Dondero this time. And uh, got a question that call here. Yeah. Somebody called timeout on the field? Yeah. And the players are saying we didn't call timeout. Wow. I thought they would try to go out the field with this 14 point uh, deficit and um, try to regroup and get things together because they're not playing bad football. They they know they can move the ball up and down the field. Now these guys are little mistakes. They can score points also. Well they showed it up.
Uh, that could be expired. I, I just see a running back right here. Get them right back into the game. And back there to receive is number 27, Mark Wolf. For Don Darrow. And kicking off, number 88, Steve Beswick. A six foot, 200 pound senior, also a tight end. Rochester doing a fine job uh, running the ball as well as passing, and I think that running game has opened up their passing a little bit, but uh, a mistake there by Costas to close that uh, first half when he threw an interception. And uh, here is the kickoff. Now we're underway here in the second half. The ball will stay in bounds and taking it there, 51. Ball squirts loose, and who's gonna take it? It's first down the other way, Rochester. It's a great night. It's for Rochester right there, it was a big turnover. Uh, Royal Oaks keeping the same thing they did the first half when they had making the little mistakes that you know the good teams do not do. And Rochester's a good team. You can't make those kind of mistakes uh, and expect to win. It is Todd Zellinger on the recovery. As we hear, number 38, 5'8", junior, 165. First and 10 from about the 15-yard line. And rambling for a few yards is Balter. Gain of about four or five yards now. It's, uh, it'll be second and five. This has to be a, a great lift to the Rochester team. You know, they had an opportunity to win, to score some more points, and um, they're getting to get a chance to do, uh, to do it in the first half, into the first half. Uh, right now, they got an opportunity to put some more points on the board. Costas handing off to Balter again. Hit this time right at the line of scrimmage by number 77 and 75 for Don Darrow, Lynn Livingston, and Les German. This could be a great opportunity, you know, uh, hypothetically, for, uh, for Royal Oak right here. They could stop him this, on this drive right here and don't let him get any points. They could build some momentum and, some and character for the ball club to score some points for them, put them back in the game. Well, that's looking at it positively if you're a Royal Oak fan, but uh, looking at it realistically right now, a big run for Camera, Tony Camera, coming up with a big run. And Camera and Balter are doing a bulk of the work for Rochester right now. Fourth and two. And hey, you've got to look at it optimistically right now for right. Rochester. They had nothing else to lose for. They could, it's nothing else to do. If they score this time, the game is pretty much out of reach. But they can stop them right now and maybe took a lot of starch out of, Royal, I mean, out of the Rochester team, they might be able to go down the field and score and be right back in the game. Big play right here. Let's see what happens. Handoff to and they do Camera. It. Camera nowhere to go. He has stood up at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a first down, but it's going to be going the other way. Tony Camera on the carry for the Falcons. Let's see where they mark it. That is a great defensive stand by the Royal Oak. Uh, Dondero team. First down, Royal Oak Dondero. And it is a first down going the other way. A big stand. Hey, hey, you did look at it optimistically, and they came up with it. Now I've got a chance to get back in the game. and score right here. And the I tell you right now, that's a big momentum builder. And we're, we're at Michigan. We, we, we play for things like this. We got gold balls for winning, doing things just like this, and giving our offense a lot of momentum going back up the field. You won't believe how much this picks up a team. Let's see if it does. Quarterbacking number 19, Jerry Wenzel. Wenzel handing off. Off tackle play. Wolf on the carry. But just as fired up is the defense for Rochester. He lost the ball there, but I guess he was down in the pile. Uh, right there on the last play, he tried to run a power off tackle. And uh, we got a lot of penetration. He didn't get a chance to get his field, get his momentum going upfield. And I guess got a gain of about a half a yard. So second and a long nine now for Dondero. Got to keep it on the ground now, deep in their own territory. Trying to hustle off field is number 60, Alex Nagy. Off tackle again. Big run this time and finally stood up and turned back is Bill Sage. Bill Sage is really, re running really well for Royal Oak. Uh, when they have the holes there, uh, any kind of hole, their backs run real well. And they do, they have real tough runners and they go fight for the extra yards. And, uh, they need to keep the ball on the, on, on the ground right now. Um, they don't have a real good concept of the, of the running game, I mean, the passing game. Hand off right here off, off tackle. Good run, spinner right there, extra effort. Got to hang on to that ball. 
And he does. Two men in the backfield, the pitch going the other way, counter reverse to Wolf. Mark Wolf changing direction now, has some room, and it's off to the races, and finally caught by number 80, Nate Childers. That was a great play. Uh, I, I didn't think he'd see it coming, and that was a great play. He needed a little uh, running play to get him uh, downfield and made some little dipsy do. Uh, they've been using the basic plays at him tonight, and a little fancy footwork right there got him up there in the first down and got him out of a lot of trouble. Yeah, he got him deep out of their own territory now. Ball at about the 30-yard line. Ball taken off tackle number 23. Big gain this time. Gain of about five. It'll be second and five by Brian Boswell. Hey. I'll tell you right now, they move the ball down the score right now. Rochester's in a lot of trouble. And they, they're doing, I'm impressed with them. They just stay away from the minor things. They do this well. But they stay away from the minor troubles uh, that they usually come up with once they get across the 50-yard line. They could be a good opportunity for them to score points. Again, we mentioned they just don't look like an 0-3 team except for those minor mistakes. And held back, <laughs> he still had his feet moving. They had him by the shirt, and he just kept going. Well, it was number 44, Sage, again. He just broke that one tackle. He had a lot of opportunity to run up the field and gain a lot of yards for him. So it's going to be third and five now for Don Darrow. I don't look for Passing it. down. I don't look for him to put the ball in the air, though. They, did not, they didn't have a lot of success in the first half with the ball in the air. They do go off tackle. And a fumble and picked up by number 58 for Rochester. By Don Darrow, number 58, or 68, excuse me, Tony Wesley. Those numbers squared off, they look like fives and sixes. It was 68, Tony Wesley, and carrying the ball very loosely, Brian Boswell, number 23. I think it's about the third turnover for Royal Oak today, and uh, we're at Michigan, we, we preach that uh, five turnovers in one game, uh, we will blow out a team, and they're getting pretty close to that right now. The handoff straight up the middle, Balter, big gain, breaks into the backfield, first down. He just left bodies laying on the ground. There's three or four bodies just laying on the ground he hit. That he hit, not them hitting him. And uh, they tell him, let that, let that young man in the backfield like that all the time, and he's going to hurt a few defensive backs. Craig Balter, 5'10", 190, a senior. And he has impressed some people here tonight, I'll tell you. First and 10, 638 left in the third quarter. Hand off again to Balter. And another gain. This time about four or five yards. Let's see. Gain of about, we'll call it five. We'll give him five. It'll be second and five. Now, not can, can Rolo do the same kind of defensive stand they had last time? Uh, they put a lot of pressure on the defensive team right now. They've gone to field a lot this second half already. Um, to ask them to stop him again after the successful goal line stand before. Frank Fear is proud of his defense. That's one reason right there. But uh, gaining a few on the play is camera. Gain of about one yard. It'll be third and four coming up. I would like to see, I would like to see Rochester uh, take the ball to the tailback right here. Throw the ball up, top, up deep. But I think they would catch a lot of people by surprise with this play. See some mosquitoes out here, Gene. I'm, I'm allergic <laughs> to them too, I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> okay, if you hear Gene uh, drop his mic, he's running away from mosquito. But running away this time from the Ron Dondero defense is uh, number 36, Tony Camera. And again, Camera and Balter, your uh, two backs in the backfield, your Zonka and the kick, if you will. They're gonna be in a hall of, they're gonna be in high school hall of fame right now after this game, because they're running real well. And Walter makes a good block at the point of attack right there. No one's in sight. He cuts up in the hole. Running real well right there. Meeting people, three or four people have to bring him down. That's kind of running backs you like to see. And he drags him down, he does. It'll be first and goal now. Handoff up the middle. And guess who that is? My man, Balter. They, they changed the offensive scheme that time. They ran a little veer option right there. That split back. And uh, the quarterback just ran down the line of scrimmage and handed it off to the to the fullback and he had an option if he didn't hand it off then he had a chance to either, either one keep it or pitch it out to the right uh, to the camera coming around the end Balter doing a fine job he's also a great wrestler and uh, 
a great tradition of wrestling here at Rochester High School. I formation in the backfield. The handoff goes to Balter, and he wrestles for a few yards here down by the end zone. They're getting close. Third and about three coming up. The New York Giants had their BLT time. <laughs> Rochester has their the, the Balter time. So uh, I, I would imagine, I, I can't see anything different right now. There's third and three. Just give the ball to him again. Uh, he, he'll get three yards for you and, and two down and score a touchdown for you. 408. They have just eaten up the clock here, and it's Balter again, just muscling for a few yards short of the goal line. They're going to have to call a fourth down play here. Fourth and could it be the Royal Oak will stop him twice and inside the 10-yard line? What are we going to call it here? Fourth and two. It's about two yards. Good two yards. Can you can you believe it? Can it happen twice here? At Rochester Stadium, the Royal Oak puts up a great defensive stand for the second time in a row. They've done it once. Let's see what happens here. Fourth and two. Two yards away for a touchdown. The handoff to Balter. Balter trying to muscle for it. the they touchdown. <laughs> and it doesn't look like he got in. Coach Beard must be very, very proud of this defensive team. That is a great effort. You, you don't see this very often. They have a lot to be proud of. If they lose the game tonight, they have a lot to be proud of. It's stopping a team inside the 10-yard line twice, twice. on successive, uh, successive Look at the surge series. down here now. A lot of bodies flying in there. It just kept it. You see, we should well short the first out, and my man Balter did not make it. You saw him bend, but they did not break that time. And a timeout called now for Don Darrow after a great defensive play to stop the Rochester Falcons from getting in the end zone. 14 to nothing the score. We'll be back. A lot of question marks on that side of Rochester. They're trying to figure out what they did wrong, but they didn't do anything wrong. It was all on Dondero's side. They did everything right in stopping Rochester. And if there's one thing that Frank Fuhrer had something to talk about, it was his defense. You know, he has a lot to be proud of tonight. You know, I, I don't want to be too critical of the team because they're young people and they got a chance to, and there's a lot of inexperienced playing, uh, players playing and all. Uh, but he has, he's building a character tonight uh, with the team. Uh, they had they had an opportunity to be blown out in front of Paris night tonight, and uh, his team came up with two big goal line stands. Even though they haven't scored any points, they moved the ball well for the team tonight. Hey, you got to be proud of the team back there. You got to give them something to pat, to pat on the back about tonight. Now it's up to the offense to get the ball out of there, and struggling to get the ball out of there is Wenzel, the quarterback, just nowhere to go. <laughs> Do a quick kick in here, uh, you pull one of these. <laughs> if you had a great punter, you would. Yeah, I would. I, I still would. I, I, I would. I think I would try it. I would set up those four minutes to try and get a real quick, quick kick. Get the, get the luck of the roll. Because you know your defensive team can stop them now. They've proved it two or three series in a row now. Split backfield now. Handing off off tackle. They've been successful that way. And a big run by number 23, if it is. Or 23, it is. Boswell. Good run by Boswell right there. Uh, they got close to a first down. Uh, they need some breathing room right here. They need to at least get a close, get a first down, get a punter some time. You're, you're going to see right here on this, uh, this, on this replay right here. Just breathing room. That's all they need. Yep. Off tackle. Good blocking go. there. Good blocking. Good cut right here. Made nice run right here. Picked up eight, nine yards. Oh. Penalty. Holding against the offense. Second down. Well, that backs them up as far as they can go, really. They're about a foot away from the goal line. And uh, not very good. Let's see what happens now. They've been running very successful off tackle and cutting back. Yeah. And they just made a little mistake. We get a big yard to get big gain again, and they had to call back. Uh, uh, another flag on the play. I don't know how far back they're going to knock them now. It's like, well, guess we're Canadian football. It's that time we had two or three move, men move at the same time. The man in motion, number 86, Brian Hallis. Let me ask you this question. I, you know, I'm a football person. I, I don't remember. Can you get a, a safety by having so many, too many penalties? Do you have enough yardage to go? I, don't know. I really don't think so. I think, so. I think you can. Third down. 
I really think you can. You can get a safety by having too many penalties like that. Well, uh, we may just have to stick around and see if that <laughs> happens <Kizo>. tonight. <laughs> Two minutes, 10 seconds left in the third quarter. Time has really flown by. Zave stuck to the ground game. And here's another one. And Gene, a couple more of these. <laughs> we just may find out about that penalty. Boswell on the carry had it counted. Coach, Coach Pugh had to be a little disappointed as the offensive team. Uh, they're not playing as, as a unit, and that's what you have to do. Playing as a good roster the team, I, I thought they'd be a little bit more Brooks motivated. Man, get the defense. Oh. They're, they're down. Surprise. So we're going back and forth now. It's encroachment on the defense. And a third down and three situation now, which is not bad. I think I have, I, I have a lot of confidence in uh, Rollo's offense. They'll, they'll get the three yards here and carry over another three before they make uh, another penalty. And back them up a little bit more. Third down three. Big gain right here. Boswell is stopped. And a fourth down coming up. They're going to have to punt it anyway. See, that's where that quick, that quick kick, that punt would have came in handy because there's no one back there to return it. You just let loose of one. And... Uh, you know, you could be uh, fortunate to get it deep into Rochester territory. We were talking a lot about Royal Oaks defense, but this is a great play by Rochester right here. Uh, they had a chance to shut them down and made a good, good surge here on the defensive side. Uh, we thought we were going to see We're not going to see it, but uh, of course we know what happened. And now the punt coming up. And a very high and short kick. Taken by oh, number three, and we got he's got some room to run. A nice cutback, and finally brought down uh, just short of the 10-yard line. A big run back by number 40, Nick Varellen. The penalty on, on, the, on the play. I hope it's not. I think it's going to be pushing in the back, a legal block from behind. Let's hear the call down there. Nick Varellen with a big run, number 40, and they had that wall set up very nicely. He had one cutback to make and got past it take a look as we hear the penalty call here's his cut now he cuts up field and he's gonna have to first cut ball back. clipping on the run back first down and that's what you fear the clipping on the run back and that's what happened but a nice run nonetheless by Nick Varellen first and 10 104 left in the third quarter both teams have stayed on the ground pretty much now in the third quarter, and time has gone by pretty quickly. The handoff to the second man through, Balter. And he gains about three yards. No, make that two. So it'll be second and eight. Rochester's the offense will have to do something for the defense. They, they've been on the field. They they look great from the 50 to the you know, or to the 20 to the 20s. And uh, they get down inside the 10-yard line, they, their offense does not seem as crisp as it is in the middle of the field. And, uh, this is a big series for them just for confidence factor. And if you talk about confidence factor, that Dondero defense, they got all the confidence in the world right now, stopping them twice on big drives. But a flag on the play as Balter cuts outside. He's got a lot of room to run. Catching up to him is number 86, Hallis. Man, he, he left three people laying in the middle of the field and he hit himself. But there's a, there's a flag on the field. I think it's gonna be offensive holding. I'm not mistaken. A very impressive running in by ball, and it is offensive holding. They're gonna bring it back, and that's twice. Two big plays brought back. Let's take a look. He's cut up inside right here. Look at three men hit him one time, and he just bust right through there. And that's where the holding came in. Good move right there. He left two men on the field. He's not only just a bruiser, he has a couple of few moves right here. He gets body pinned right here. Offense. Second down. Second and 10 now. So how quickly things can change. Second and 10. The Dondero defense doing their job. Forcing things like that to happen. Rochester now at about their 43 yard line. Second and 20. And that will end the third quarter of play. And at the end of the third quarter, it is 14 to nothing. Rochester leads. We'll be back to see what happens when the fourth quarter returns right after this.
back here at Rochester High School. They're going to let it go. What The clock still shows 12 minutes left. And on the run is Balter. Maybe I'm mistaken. Did they change sides? No, they did not change sides. That's what I'm saying. Did they let, now we're going to change quarters now? At, on the fourth quarter? Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Well, the scorekeeper up here and the announcer are confused. We're confused. I've never seen this in, in, in my history. I've seen things tonight I've never seen in my history of football. And I played for 18 years of my life. And I've never seen anything like this. Okay, we're going to get things straightened out now. It is a like third a down eight situation. Eight <laughs> we're going four seconds off in the wrong direction, huh? Okay, the referees are down there. They're talking it over. Everything's all straightened out. And Rochester is going to pick it up now. They're going to change the clock. Now they want the clock back to 12. Ooh. Ooh. So really, that play took no time off the clock, that last play. So did he get, get, get yardage? You go to the statistical uh, book? <laughs> he got five yards on the play. It's third now and 15. Ooh. And they're going to have to put the clock back. A free play then, huh? I'm a little confused. Uh, I'm just sorry to say that. OK, well, we got some problems with the clock. That's the. Uh, that's a story right now here from Rochester High School. Coaches are confused. Players are confused. <laughs> Announcers are confused. <laughs> the band members are confused. <laughs> We're all here in one simple pot trying to figure it out. OK, clock winding down now. We're trying to get it to zero. This has been a very quick quarter. <laughs> it was. The last quarter was a quick quarter. Both teams are trying to be physical and beat each other up at the line of scrimmage. And they get a lot of, a lot of yards between the 20s, but no one can put the ball in, uh, in the end zone. And uh, we got to find out what Rollo can do to put the ball in the end zone. And, uh, and also for Rochester, they've had two quick scores in the first half, but they haven't done anything in the second half and they had golden opportunities. And we are now about to get underway in the fourth quarter. And we are underway in the fourth quarter. And a screenplay set up to number 88, Steve Beswick. Beswick gains a few yards. Another flag on the play. And they're going to bring this one back. Uh, another. This one's on number 60. Alex Nagy. He doesn't believe it. Yeah, the, natives, Rochester. the natives in Rochester are getting restless. The crowd's upset on that call. They thought he had a great block there on a, the spring one for the spring right here. As you're going to see, he drops back here. He sets it up real well. He doesn't give it away. He just loops it over. He comes around, and this block right there, is that illegal block? No it seems like it beat over, oh, they picked the flag up. Well, to say, uh, so this has been a uh, confusing fourth quarter, but now that we've got all that out of the way, it's going to be fourth and about six coming up now for Rochester in a punt situation. See, that's good. I'm glad they got a chance to communicate like that, because if we make a mistake, you would be mad enough to pick it up and, and go on and with the play. Exactly. 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 Punt. Number 25, it is a nice bounce for Rochester, and they're going to let it go if they can just get it before it gets in the end zone. Oh, a beautiful roll. You couldn't ask for anything better than that. That was a mistake on the Royal team. Young teams, a young player back there, uh, he should always feel the ball. At least call, catch a fair catch. They lost 15, 20 yards on the roll. But a great play for Rochester. And uh, you hate to say it, but Frank Fuhrer, his uh, offensive team, hasn't done the greatest job uh -oh. tonight. Especially deep in their own territory. Another flag. Another flag on the far side. Uh, once again, we see a flag out there. Wow, this, this has been a penalty real bit in uh, fourth quarter. Uh, <laughs> and we're only, we've got 11.36 left to play in the fourth <laughs> quarter, too. 24 seconds that we've had uh, 15 flags. No, I, I'm exaggerating. But uh, we got to clean it up a little bit right now and get down and get, get back to consistent, hard-nosed football. Well, hey, it's, uh, you can't say it's the referee. They're just doing their job. It's That's the right. kids, right? That's right. As a young team against an inexperienced team. Well, we're going to bring this back now. And Rochester will do it all over after a beautiful punt. That time by number 25, Sick Sickley. Dave Sickley, a 12, he's in his 12th year, a senior, a 6-foot 
175 pound defensive back. This is a beautiful facility out here in Rochester. Uh, uh, I'm very, very happy to see the high school kids that have a chance to do work on this kind of facilities that they're not gonna get hurt not on a rough field, that the grass is well maintained. Uh, well maintained and nice uh, all weather outdoor track and good coaching right here. Good, good, good facility. I love to see it. Now who's the penalty on? Talking to the Rochester captain. I think they're going. To, I think it's against um, Royal Low, but they're going to measure see if they're getting first down or not out of it. Okay. So let's see if they will. Oh, it's going to be very close. They're going to measure it. They had another half step there, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> let's hear the call. We're not going to hear the call. They're still confused down there. That's, I, I could never be a referee. I know it's a hard job. It's very difficult. Let's we can see. sit here and get illegal substitution. Fourth down. So it's a fourth and one now. You've seen them all, haven't you, Gene? <laughs> I tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, this game's going down in history. As, as the most of the weirdest uh, penalty calls in one game. Fourth and one. All he needs one. Balter outside. He gets one. He gets more. Gain of about five. Heck, he got about six yards on that one. Nine. I guess he was tired. He got. I guess he was tired of bruising people, so he took <laughs> the opportunity to go outside and give them a break and get a first down. Good play. Good smart running. Off tackle right here. He took a little wider because the hole was jammed up. He beat the man right there at the, uh, at the tackle at the point of attack and try to spin right here and first down. Extra yardage, squirming for more again, Balter. And gaining, it. let's see, four yards on that. It'll be second and six coming up. I'm amazed that the Royal Oak uh, defensive team can still stand up after this much time on the field. Uh, it's, more, it's much more difficult to play defense because you're chasing people all day long. And some very draining goal line stands as they've been down there, deep in their old territory. Again, Balter trying to cut outside. This time it's going to be strung out and a good tackle out there by number 46. That is Steve Lovejoy. That was a great play by Steve Lovejoy. Uh, he saw get ready to bounce out. He kept him inside. Uh, went down low on him because he knew he was no, no match physically uh, in the upper body strength. And uh, a good play. Steve Lovejoy, defensive back, comes up to make this stop. And a good job on the defensive line stringing this out. Hit him nice and low. Can't go anything, can't go anywhere out the legs. As Balter found out that time, stepping up down the split backfield, his camera faking the handoff is Costas, and he gets it off in a complete pass to number 88, Steve Beswick. Nice, nice bootleg right there. Uh, had the man on the old row, on the roll right here and hit the man between two defensive players and real, recovered real well. Good touch, good strong arm right there off, off the run. This is a very tough pass to throw here. You know the man is covered well. And just to zing it in there is a challenge and he does it. In between two men right there, good play. He faced a belly, it's called a belly pass where he faced the both men going off the right side in the same hole. He rolls off to the, keep on continue rolling to the right hand side and get the man off the roll. Fourth and four, they're gonna go for it. Passing down, he does, and complete. He is down short of the goal line, about two yards at the short of the goal line, but a great play, nonetheless, by number 85. That is Mike Horrigan. See, that's a great play right there. We did there, he took a one or two step drop back there, and we caught, and he threw the ball to a spot, not to a man. It's called a fade pattern. And he hit the man right on the numbers. He beat the defensive back, who just had a chance to look at it. He arched the ball high in the air, let the defensive, let the wide receiver run under it, and great catch and throw. He had his uh, man beat by about five yards. This is camera on the play, getting in there quickly, number 19, Jerry Wenzel, the quarterback. Could it be that we have our third one in a row? Could we have our third one in a row? A great goal line stand. Well, you Would that be history in high school? <laughs> They did it before, they did it twice, and it was questionable then, you you brought it up. And we said you were being very optimistic. Let's see what happens here. Don Darrow oh, cannot oh. stop 
this time the great running of number 45, Greg Balter. He Just said, you stopped me last time, but I'm not let, gonna let you do it again. So Greg Balter, the excellent wrestler as well, gets in and the score 20 to nothing now, Rochester. And you see the nice play right off hole, off tackle. Uh, his running, officer running back, gets a good block inside. He just leans forward. Uh, that kind of yardage, no one's gonna stop him in high school football today. And his feet were still moving when he uh, hit the ground there. <laughs> he wanted it that time. In to kick is Beswick. He got his first one blocked back in the first quarter, second quarter rather. This one is good. And the score, 27 or 26 rather to nothing. 21 and nothing. 21, now. excuse me. 21 nothing, Rochester leads in the fourth quarter. The score, 21 nothing, Rochester over Don Darrow. Don Darrow with two Great goal line stands earlier in the game, just couldn't do it that time. As Greg Balter, who's been carrying the ball very well tonight, as well as number 36, Tony Camera, doing a bulk of the work. But that time, it was a passing play to Mike Horrigan that got him going. Back to receive it is Wolf. Wolf with some good yardage here on the kickoff, and they've uh, had some pretty good field position after kickoffs. It just, you know, they, they played a great game. You know, I don't want to be real critical. They played a great game. Just the little things, they've, they've turned the ball over five times in the, in the evening, and you can't expect to win if you do things like that. And then uh, besides that, in a key situation, when they need to get the first down yardage or they're driving, they make the holding or the, or the, or the, or the silly mistake or jumping off sides or not have, have enough men on, on the line of scrimmage. First and 10 ball on the 34. Wenzel handing off to his halfback, number 27, Mark Wolf. Nothing there that time. That was a great play by John Daydock right there. He he beat his man, he beat his uh, offensive blocker at the point of attack, shook him off, and still had a chance, an opportunity to grab the running back for a loss. They got to put a drive together right now, and just at least to give the defense a rest. Or they'll be like a track meet right now. They'll just, when they're tired like this, they'll be able to score a lot of points. Second and 12. And it's a good point you mentioned, Gene, because... Uh, 21 nothing right now, and you mentioned that defense has been out there quite a bit for Don Darrow, and they have. And the offense just hasn't been able to get anything going against the, the defense of Rochester. Ever since that first drive, a lot of time to pass, and he gets it off, and he gets it off to a man who's covered well. And a flag on the play, it looks like interference on number 28, Jim Myers. The pass was intended for Paul Cantrell. Now, that's a great break for Royal Oak right there. They had an opportunity to give an opportunity to score, I mean, to get a first down and to run off three or four more plays and give the defense a chance or an opportunity to rest up. Um, they even might score a touchdown right here. Let's think positively for them. Uh, it'd be a great motivator for the defense of a young team right now. Let's hear the call. Pass interference against the defense. First down. That's what it is. Pass interference. First down and 10 now. Ball at the 46-yard line. So a big break for Don Darrow as they will attempt to get some points on the board here with this drive. They haven't had really a big drive since their very first possession. Back to pass is Wenzel. He's got his man in the flat, but the pass was short of his intended receiver, Bill Sage. He's short on the ball right there. He didn't get a chance. He didn't set up all the way and get the proper fundamentals and throw the ball all the way through. He threw off his back foot and the ball sunk on him and you get an opportunity for his receiver to catch the ball. So it'll be second and 10 now coming up for Don Darrow. 21 to nothing the score, 707 left in the ball game. They must be getting low, must start throwing the ball down the field right now because they can longer time in the huddle. And usually the, the running plays a little shorter call than easier to call. And you called it, Gene. There's a pass out in the flat. Wolf has got some running room. He gets the first down and more. Great play. Why did he do this early in the game? Uh, sit up and get the passing game together. Uh, the short pass, he's throwing the ball downfield long. Uh, 
wasn't that successful, but his short passing game seems to be very good. He does that very well. He has excellent touch, and you can read the receivers real well. Correction, I said uh, Wolf with the reception. Wolf has just come in now. Boswell was number 23 with the reception. Out there in the flat, all by himself. Nobody out there. And I think we made, they made a play earlier in the, in the first half when they had an opportunity to get a, get a first down. They ran out of bounds with the ball. Wolf is in the backfield now. He gets the ball this time. And gain of about three. It'll be about second and seven coming up now. And clock winding down. 6.20 left in the game. Let's take a look. A count, another count, inside count on trap. And uh, he, miss, he comes back inside his, his blocker and gains three good yards. Split backfield now, this time straight handoff. Great running right there. He was tacked, he was here at the line of scrimmage and he put his shoulders down and kept his legs driving and gained an extra two yards, making it third down and five. Wolf again on the carry. It will be third and five coming up now. Are they gonna put the ball to roll out again and put the ball in the air? Um, I, Worked last time. Yes it is, but Rochester knows that too. If we know it, Rochester knows it. Uh, I don't know, I think I try to play off, off tackle right now and get the five yards. They could fake it up the middle and go out for a pass the other way like they did last time. They went to the wide side of the field. What are they gonna do? They do fake it, but this time they're going down the middle of the field, down the sideline, ball tipped up in the air, and down there is Hallis, who was covered by two players, Myers and number 88, Beswick. Great play by defensive back to the ball hung up in the air a little bit. It gave them an opportunity to get in position to, to uh, break up the pass. And the man was wide open again. He just lost the ball just a little bit too high. If he threw more of a string, he might have had an opportunity for six points. Fourth and five coming up now for Dondero. 5.20 left in the ball game. 21 to nothing the score. Rochester leads. Dondero on the move, back to pass is Wenzel, he's got his man, first down and more. Wenzel cuts back, uh -oh. he's got some room to run and finally brought down by number 86, Tim Jenkins. But a big gain and a pass to Dan Simon, number 45. I'm glad to see that happen. Now he got a chance to score some points, give this young team some confidence. They've been playing real well tonight, just in the five turnovers that kept them out the ball game. Uh, they score some points right now. You can see it right here. Look at it. it pass on the on the flat. He misses. They miss a tackle right here. He's strong on his way through it. Cuts back and gets down to the big four yard line. First and four. Great play for Royal Oak Dundero. First and goal at the four yard line. And Dondero has awakened now with some big passing plays this time. Wenzel handing off to number 29. Off tackle, Bill Harris. Good Not much room in there. Good defensive stands by Rochester. Again, if he gained a yard, he gained uh, a lot on that play. He had three men standing in the hole, waiting for him to, uh, to come to them. I'd look for something here on the wide side. A they pass? Wanted, they, well, I don't know, but they, they've got some room to work out here. Yeah, we got two men to beat. Uh, the defensive end and, and uh, defensive back on the side. And but then again, they've been going to that left side behind their big blockers. Let's see what happens. They're going the wide side, but cutting up field and trying to cut up field, but nothing there. Nothing but blue, rather. Yeah, then it crisscross. Uh oh, the crowd trying to get in and get their own goal line stand set up for the Rochester Falcons. Uh, they tried to crisscross in the backfield that time and got a lot of penetration for the defensive uh, tackle. And um, they got lost of two yards right now. It's very important that they get in the end zone, third and four. Well, here we go, Rochester trying to come up with one of their own now, a goal line stand, as you said. Third and four coming up. They're in a passive formation. Straight T, backfield, rather. Two men in the backfield. Big oh. run. Hey, he's in. Touchdown. Mark Wolf, number 27. And Don Darrell has something to cheer about now. A long drive, took some time off the clock, and they got in there with some passing, surprisingly. Yes, they do. And they, and they surprised me last time. They might, like they might have surprised Rochester. They 
You're going to see right here, they spread the defense open a little bit and gave the ball right behind the tackle. He does a good cut. He cuts up inside the hole and sees the goal line and dies for the six points. Hey, great play. They didn't go for two. They're not out of it yet. Back to pass, not much to do here. Hey, look, at he's got some room out there and intercepted in the end zone. There's a flag on the play, I believe. The flag on the play. It's against, it's against Rochester to get an opportunity for another two points. It looks like it will be against Rochester as they are questioning the call down there. And they are talking to number 45 down there, Dan Simon, the captain for Royal Oak Dondero. They're going to get another shot at it. You go, what would you do now? Go back off tackle or put in the, in the, in the offense for a pass formation and go back off tackle for the six points? It depends where they're going to mark the ball here. Let's see. Pass interference against the defense. Down over. Going to get the down over. They don't get I try yards. running off tackle again. No, they don't gain anything on it. They just get the play over, I guess. Let's see what happens. A shotgun formation. Definitely a passing down. He's going to run it himself. Once so not much room to go. And they fail to get the conversion, but they pick up six points in this fourth quarter. 3.32 left, 21-6 to score. along with Gene Bell back here at Rochester High School, 21-6 to six the score. This program is brought to you with the cooperation of Rochester High School and is the sole property of WTUO and Rochester and Royal Oak Dondero High Schools. Any retransmission or tape recording of this event without the express written permission of WTUO and Rochester and Royal Oak Dondero High Schools is forbidden. And now the kickoff coming up, an onside kick by Dondero. And a nice bounce, a very friendly bounce for Dondero, but right in the hands of a blue shirt. And that is number 85 down there, Mike Horrigan, who came up with a big pass play earlier for Rochester to set up a score for them. So an onside attempt failed for Royal Oak as they have tried to supply some action here in the fourth quarter, and they did. A big drive that time, eating up uh, most of the clock. I'll tell you right now, you know, uh we're also going to lose this game, you know, three minutes, 15 seconds of the game, left to game in the game. And, uh, but they put what happened, man? You were optimistic now. Come on. I, I things am can happen here. I, it really can. But I'm just saying, if they win or lose the game, they have a lot to be proud of. They, the defense played well. Yeah, they really do. The offense, uh, they move the ball well. And just the little mistakes that a, a more mature team, maybe next year with, with the team they have with JV, was 4-0, used to winning. They'll, they'll bring back, be back to normal power. Let's take a look at that last play. Camera takes it off tackle and a big gain of eight yards. It'll be second and eight. We had to say a lot, but for the uh, Rochester's offensive line, they've been blowing people off the line of scrimmage. Uh oh, uh, fumble. fumble. There's a big and chance. Anything can happen, and Don Darrow's got it. Hey, they're back in the games so right now. They score now. They're only, they're only, they score now and get the, uh, two points of first with only seven points behind. 2.30 left, 2.31 to be exact. You remember Stanford? In the ball game. Hey, California Golden Bears. But you there's remember? no band down there in the end zone this time. <laughs> On the other side. <laughs> Anything could happen. There you and go. If there's anyone that's optimistic, it's you. They say, hey, right there, Don Darrow. He just had to miss the good. Number 67 got in there, Dean Parks. He just missed the handoff and uh, pulled the ball out. Wenzel the pass, a very gutsy call on a first down. And it Rochester gets it right back. Well, that might have killed them right there. They had an opportunity to put the ball down there. He's overthrew him, a little anxious, and threw the ball high, and uh, went over his hands, and good interception for a, Rochester. A great opportunity for Don Darrow. They came up with a first and 10 in Rochester territory, uh, coming off a great drive, and now on a first and 10, they throw the ball, intercepted, and Rochester takes over again 
Chris Costas, the quarterback. I formation, second man through his camera, and nothing there. And speaking of camera, on our camera up there on the replay, Don Anthony upstairs, Mike Murray, Ken Taylor down on the field. Doing an excellent job. We've seen all the great action and see the plays unfold and uh, doing a beautiful job, guys. And our engineer tonight, Vaughn Miet, our director, John Hammond, working the graphics, Sue Norzik. Our assistants, uh, assistants, uh, I need assistance, saying <laughs> assistance, Marta Rand. And Brian down there. Don't know how to pronounce his last name, so I won't try. <laughs> but hey, if Brian, Brian Don Donaldson, thank you, is down there, our assistants, doing a fine job tonight bringing you this contest between Rochester and Don Darrow. 21 to 6 the score, 145 left in the ball game. Hey, Gene, now you haven't ever gotten any legal trouble, huh? No, I haven't. No? No, I haven't. Well, I'll tell you what, if you ever do, there's a show on WTUO that you can watch. It's hosted by Henry Baskin. It's called Due Process. So uh, if you ever get into any legal trouble or anybody out there, Due Process, the show to watch with Henry Baskin. And uh, he'll talk about things on uh, uh, landlords, anywhere from landlords to, uh, well, you name it. Due Process on WTUO. Now back to live action. And off, off tackle to number 45, Balter. He's still in there trying to gain some big yardage with the clock winding down now. They are to run, but three more. If they get first down here, the game is basically over uh, 30 seconds, 30, 40 seconds a, a pop. It's going to average for him to take, and it'll be, uh, the game will be history. But uh, Rochester should be proud. The parents, the parents' night out. Uh, here's a nice runoff tackle. Good hit. Uh, gain of three good yards. Uh, he's, he's close to 100-yard mark tonight. If he's not over, already over it. Third and 11. Balter outside, trying to get outside, but stopped there by a great pursuit of number 45, Dan Simon. He is their animal back, Dan Simon. Yeah. So from 145 to another. <laughs> Here's to you, huh? <laughs> they bring him down. It'll be fourth and five in a punting situation coming up for Rochester. 105 left on the clock. See, uh, Rolo's right here. Right. Rolo's going to have to block the punt right here to get back to the game. And, and we'll see what happens right after this. Enjoy the very best in fine arts programming on Bravo, a premium service from Tribune United. WTUO TV, Channel 2. Rochester 21, down Darrow 6. Rochester has to punt now with 105 left on the clock. And it's too bad for Royal Oak because uh, their offense started to get going, but it took four, four, four quarters to do it. See, they're going to have to go after the ball right now. They shouldn't have had anybody back. They sent all 11 men on the line of scrimmage and go after block the punt. They had nothing to lose. That's right. Just make it happen right here. There you go. They've got some pressure in there. A high kick just bouncing at the 50-yard line, taken by number 86, Brian Hallis. Hallis is dragged down back at the 41-yard line and a flag on the play. 15 yards out of a late hit on a, or a spearing play. Hey, they gained a lot of yards. They got almost came close to getting the punt blocked today. A quick touchdown here in the onside kick. Hey, we're back in the ball game. 21-6, 54 seconds left. And it's going against Rochester. I think it's a 15-yard penalty. Spearing. Now, what is spearing, just uh, for people out there that don't know? Okay, that's when you use the top part of your headgear, the crown part of your headgear. When somebody's down and hit them, and strike them with, the, with any part of your headgear like that, when they're down, it can cause a lot of damages, such as broken necks and other things like that. It hurts the player even more than it does it. Let's see what that, he was in uh, the passing motion, so it'll be an incomplete pass. Falling on at number 24, Bill Barker, who said, hey, give it to us, but uh, can't do it. Second and 10 now. Wenzel in a uh, shotgun that time and just couldn't get it off. He saw the people coming. 
Again in a shotgun, this time on loads. And hit the ground first. Flag on the play. Oh, yes, we've seen a lot of those this evening. Wizzle's been getting battered up a little bit. They're hitting it from all directions. They're talking to Rochester. The penalty will go against Royal Oak Dondero. 38 seconds left on the clock. 21 to 6 to score. I think it's against Rochester. We've got both teams over there talking about it. Dondero just waiting patiently, hoping the call is against Rochester. It is Rochester. Like a Pittsburgh Steeler, uh, Oakland Raiders kind of game, doesn't it? Uh, a lot of penalties. Uh, the big play. They're the big, both big play teams. They don't mind those kind of penalties. Uh, uh, Royal Oak is a little more uh, less experienced than um, than Rochester, and that's one of their reasons why they make a lot of mistakes. But they have a lot of uh, sophomores, sophomores and juniors playing, and and Royal, uh, Rochester should be making kind. They have a lot of seniors playing, and uh, Letterman from last year's ball club. And the Rochester team is primarily a senior team. And there's some pressure put on blocked by number 89. And Arnold Gay. Arnold Gay. That one's big, big build. I was going to say, that looked, that play looked a little familiar. I wonder where he learned that from. <laughs> I wonder if William had a lot to do with that. Arnold Gay, he's 6'2", 185. The defensive end comes around. Watch this play here. Jumps Just except up. one hand is all it takes. Boom. That's not going anywhere. Wenzel back to pass again. This time tipped and hit hard. Was well, number 29 down there. I, I, you know, maybe Bill I'm Harris. wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think there was, that was another quarterback in there, Britton Wither. If I, I think he got hit a couple plays back. Uh, Wither did. And uh, Wither's in there throwing the toss of the last few passes. Change, change, the, change the momentum, maybe throw the ball a little bit better downfield than Winslow did. One important man I failed to mention was Dave Damon. He was a technical director, also works at Chiron and Graphics for us. Dave Damon doing a fine job for us tonight. 21 seconds left, 21 to six to score. Fourth and 10 coming up. And another name I forgot, Bob Rouse. Bob Rouse working audio tonight. And a very important man he is, otherwise... Uh, We're not heard. That's right. <laughs> we are not heard. <laughs> well, it's fourth down and 10, it's the last hurrah. Throw the ball in the end zone? Throw the ball in the end zone? Uh, they just might. Let's take a look, Wenzel, back to pass, pressured. And he's going for that end zone. Up for grabs. Who's got it? Touchdown! And touchdown! <laughs> 13 <laughs> seconds left. A touchdown to do, Paul Cantrell. Do you believe in miracles? Do you believe in miracles? Two points here and an extra uh, 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 onside kicking the ball up. Throw the ball to the end zone. We have a tie ball game. Unbelievable. Here's Wetzel, the, or Brett Wither is in there. Brett Wither, number 12, a new quarterback. He's going deep. And it's a battle now. Just like basketball. Look at him. Fighting for position. Good hand. Cantrell and number 28 battling for it. Jim Myers. And I guess who wants it more? Cantrell did. The beautiful, just like Roger Staubach in the Minnesota Vikings. You get down to Minnesota. Throw the ball in the end zone. See what happens. Fourth down and 10. Last hurrah. The quiet. Crowd has got much, They're much going quieter. for two. Let's see what happens. Back. Oh. Trying that angle to the corner intended for Hallis. And it wouldn't go. 13 <laughs> seconds left on the clock. We'll be back to wrap it up and see what happens. Well, anything can happen, Gene, and it did. 
And anything has happened tonight. Boy, you've seen all sorts of calls. And uh, hey, that play had to top it off tonight. A big pass by uh, Brett Wither, number 12, just in there. He is a 6'10", 155 junior. Five. Excuse me, 5'10", 6'10", that would have been another story here. And, we need to uh, do it right here. We need to go and do it. Well, I think an onside <laughs> kick is in order. Uh-oh, uh the big shift. Here it is. A nice bounce. Nope. Didn't go 10 yards, did it? Yeah, but you may have touched it anyhow. I think another flag on the play. Another flag on the play. This game isn't over yet. There's 10 seconds left. And the pass from Brent Wither, who is, by the way, 5'10". And 150 pounds. They're picking the flag up. Oh, no flag. We've seen that before tonight. Just happened to drop his hanky. Six seconds left. And the clock winding down. That will end the ball game, but uh, hey, a very good note for uh, Royal Oak Don Darrell. They came back with some points offensively, which has uh, got to make Frank Fuhrer happy. He got you. He showed a lot of character. They were down for the whole game, made a lot of mistakes, and they still tried hard. And down to the last 10 seconds of the game, they scored a touchdown, and anything could have happened. And uh, as we've seen, <laughs> anything did happen. Well, uh, it's a great game. Great game for Rochester. Great, great day for Rochester Parents Day. They got an opportunity to get a lot of players in. They win 21-12. Uh, everybody goes back happy. A uh, little more work for the Don Darrow team and to get a little more experience. And they'll be back on their way in position uh, that they've been back in the past. Rochester now goes to 2-0. But Don Darrow had something to say before they got that 2-0, and, oh, and they wanted to see a touchdown. Let's see what happens here. They throw the ball down deep. It, just like basketball, they get fight position. They jump. It's like a jump ball. And just luck of the draw of falling back down his hands. When he gets in the hands, he gets that back on the ground. He beats him to the corner of the end zone. Touchdown. And that is Paul Cantrell. And I bet you they, uh, him and Jim Myers did some talking after the game. <laughs> they said, hey. They practice, they practice that play every day. That's right. Okay, so for Gene Bell, everyone here at WTUO Sports, the final score, 21-12. Rochester wins it over Don Darrow. Thanks for watching.